name is Sade Du Bois, and I am in the PDX metro area. Currently, right now, I actually don't have a piece because I decided that I was going to make um, a new form of work uh, instead of putting something into the exhibition. So. I'm actually right now in the planning stages of starting a piece um, for through the month of August. And it um, doesn't have a title yet, but as far as the concept, I've formulated that out. And uh, it is uh, six black mothers in this uh, um, composition where one of the mothers is uh, holding her son and he's been shot. And I wish that I could show a visual of the the, the concept for this piece, um, but I don't have that on me right now. And then all of the women are wearing black and white, um, symbolizing both mourning, but then also rebirth. And um, also when you look at a whole bunch of black and white, for me, it, it symbolizes like, um, all, a bunch of zebras together and like when a lion comes to attack and they're like in this defense like formation so that they all look like one uh so the women will be able to choose um what color they're wearing but they'll wear that in entirety so all black or all white uh and uh, i also really enjoy maps gis technology so for me like location is really big so i'm also looking at um within the PDX metro area where gang violence, uh, gun shootings, um, uh, police brutality has taken place. And I'll choose one of those locations to have the, the photo shoot at uh, for the composition of the piece. But um, I'm not even sure on what size I'm going to do the piece yet, uh, but I want it to be one of my biggest pieces so far. So it'll be at least uh, over uh, four by uh, three feet and yeah, I really want this piece to be a culmination of my strengths as an artist, my uh, my visual style, and also to bring in this Black Lives Matter aspect for the for the exhibition that's happening. Um, and just uh, yeah, I've got all these different ideas that are going on, and I'm really excited to start the piece. My work started out of uh, personal trauma and working with um, other people through workshops that I created. Um, started at Portland State University actually when I was a student um, from 2015 through 2018. And um, I, did a, um, I did a Black Lives Matter workshop uh, from the police brutality that was going on at the time. It was like 2016. And so I had 30 people come in and paint works uh, on portraits of people who had passed from police brutality. And uh, being able to create these workshops and, and paint portraits of, of people who've passed is really self-healing. And it's it gives us the ability to commemorate and honor those um, who've been here before us. And um kind of to lay to rest you know while we're out fighting for rights and for our voice to be heard in these situations especially with like george floyd recently passing and um through that i created a resistance works where i used gouache and this matte black medium to uh paint these posters and giving them out to protesters for free as a form of self-care and healing i think art is definitely intertwined with that and so um there's just been you know uh different events that have happened really through police brutality and seeing this happen in front of our eyes on the news it's it's a big thing that everyone always talks about so um, you know, that influences my art greatly and being able to do workshops with people and to be able to interact with protesters and, um, you know, with all of the protests that were going on in Portland, all of that influences uh, my more artistic journey. I've always been really interested in uh, 
uh, self-care. And so I feel like they tie in together because when these shootings happen, um, these killings happen, there's this very like, uh, these feelings of emotions that can get bottled up. And I think that um, the, the practice of art making allows me personally to be able to blow off a lot of steam and a lot of those feelings and frustrations and work through creating something beautiful um work through creating something that is meaningful that tells a story whether it be the person who passed the story or whether it be a collective story of the black experience i feel like all of it is largely intertwined and so um a lot of my work deals with portraiture and i also include landscape because i feel like uh there's such a therapeutic um visual experience when you look at nature um for me like i do a lot of backpacking i get out a lot um and so i incorporate that into my pieces so that when people look at them uh they can get a sense of of peace a sense of tranquility at that moment um and then i also create works that through portraiture start a conversation so that even if it's something that is very controversial, like uh, with Black Lives Matter, I know it can be very controversial, but creating a piece that is very striking, that is not too direct. I don't create work that is super like out there and just gory and and, um, and whatnot. This piece is gonna be a little different. I was actually going in thinking that I was going to create something that wasn't super gory or anything, which this piece really won't be, but the sun will be, uh, will have, been shot and he is passed in this photo but it's not going to be super all blood and gore but um it to create work that isn't confrontational so that there can be a conversation between many people um especially um you know in pdx uh there's you know we're all diverse there's a whole bunch of different people a whole bunch of different uh, thinking styles and, and feelings towards different um movements and stuff like that so i want to be able to have a conversation with um, as many people as possible through this work. I was informed about the grant um, from uh, Mark Jackson. He's um, the executive director over Reap Incorporated. And um, he had seen my work. He had seen the work that I was doing on the front lines uh, through the protests, um, passing out my artwork. He actually invited me to a few of the protests, both at Pioneer Square and in Woodburn, and I went to both of them and, and got to introduce myself, got to speak on uh, my practice a little bit and why I feel that artwork is so healing. Um, and um, also to be able to provide it for free is this weird thing and where like the art world, you see art being purchased for, you know, thousands to um, hundreds of millions of dollars and NFTs and all that, it's crazy. But um, to create something, that is beautiful and then to give it out for free is a resistance in itself of like um, capitalism. And I um, was deeply inspired by just the collective movement of Black Lives Matter, um, especially after the death of George Floyd. And to see that things were finally moving in place as far as getting justice for murders of Black people Plain and simple. Um, and we see a lot of that um, playing out today. And just to see this collective movement be as strong as it, as it was and as it is, like really inspired me to apply for this grant and the encouragement of other people who've seen my work and who uh, were protesters who've gotten my pieces of uh, art um, and my, my family uh, to encourage me to apply for this, uh, all were inspiration for me. In my lifetime, I want this movement to plain and simply accomplish um, laws and rights to where Black people aren't um, killed, where we're not uh, discriminated against, where we, you know, are not targeted. Um, really, I just don't want to see death anymore. Um, 
but it also goes down to a more stronger point of, you know, it's not just the killings. It's also making sure that we have at, that everyone, but more specifically, those of us that are black have access to quality health care, have access to quality housing, have access to um, safe, you know, uh, parks and that we can be able to in safe neighborhoods and, and, and have adequate amounts of food and healthy food at that. And so it's Black Lives Matter is deeper than just, you know, when, wanting to make sure that we are not being shot out in the street like a dog. It is um, having access to all aspects of life that are going to make us succeed in life <laughs> and not to be discriminated against and uh, to be able to live out life as a, a healthy human being. It has been positive in that a lot of people are more aware of it. A lot of people are more aware of what's going on, not just through the killings, but also uh, I think Black Lives Matter on top of the COVID pandemic has um, shown us a lot of faults in society, a lot of systems that are breaking down. Um, so I would say that the most positive thing is, is awareness being brought out to to everyone I, it, and at that same time like with that awareness there's a lot of pushback but i think that overall it's good i think it's good that these conversations are happening and that awareness is being made i started uh, my practice in april of 2017 so it's been about four years now since i've been in my practice so when i was younger i always wanted to have this connection with my father he was in the navy and then he moved to alaska to be closer to um, his his mother and my clinket ancestry um in anchorage alaska and so for me to he always uh sketched and and it was so remarkable for me he was always drawing and for me to feel closer to him that's what i did as a kid i drew i sketched i copied everything that was around me um i saw a flower that i really liked i did that i'd send it off to him um and as i got older that was just something that i always enjoyed i participated in all types of art competitions grade school going up um but art school was never a type of thing that i thought that i'd, I'd be that I do or go towards. Um, my mom heavily encouraged me to go into the STEM field um, or business. And so um, after I had graduated Benson Polytechnic High School in 2012, I went, got a full ride scholarship at Oregon State University in engineering. Um, I came back to be with family, um, to be closer to family. I was a first generation college student. I ended up coming back um, and enrolled into Portland State University in 2015, decided to go along with business. And I picked up my artwork a few years later after I had won um, the Miss Black and Gold pageant. It's, um, it was a pageant done by Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And I needed a skill <laughs> to be able to um, participate in this pageant. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I could do poetry, spoken word, but I felt like a lot of people would do that. I really wanted to set myself apart. And so I practiced speed painting with oil paints, um, upside down, three minute timer. And I ended up doing a speed painting of MLK. And um, I ended up winning that uh, pageant. I ended up going to districts and the nationals and I won there as well with my speed painting. And um, people wanted to purchase them. And I realized that at that moment that I could actually make my uh, work into a business, my, my artistic skills into a business. Um, and I used it for volunteering. I actually spent um, 2017 through 2018 just donating a lot of my work. Um, because I definitely wasn't the artist that I am now as far as my style and everything is concerned, but I knew that I could use my artwork to help the economics of other businesses and other Black organizations throughout Oregon. Um, so I helped uh, the Black Parent Initiative. I donated a lot of work to them, which they auctioned off. Um, I donated work to Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. I donated work off to Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I donated work off to Highland Christian Center. 
um, when um, Pastor Gail Hardy at the time uh, had cancer. So I donated to his cancer fund. All my work in the beginning was just donating and then graduated Portland State University, but I had like five more classes to finish. So I went through the ceremony, but I didn't um, officially finish. Um, and I was just working on family, got married at the time and everything like that. My art career has gone all over the place um, where, you know, in 2017, I started with uh, self-healing because I was going through a lot of trauma at the time, trying to figure that out and piece it out. That's so I started painting for that. Then it was um, where I was, it, it was recognizing the beauty of being black, but also like this intersectionality of being both Native American, Alaska Native, with my Clinkett heritage, and then also African American. And then it was, um, you know, going in with both landscape and portraiture, bringing in those like. For me, forest bathing is something that I really enjoy doing, something that recenters me, and I wanted to bring that into the busy Portland um, downtown area. And so um, I incorporated that into my works. And um, now I'm creating works that, especially through my project of Black Muses, where I paint Black women and I'm also painting Black men that are in the PDX metro area who talk about their experiences being out in nature, being out in Portland Park, uh, Parks and Recreation, being out in these green spaces uh, in this, um, you know, in Oregon. And a lot of my work is just dialogue. It's just this conversation uh, about people's lives that is transmuted on paper as a painting. It's definitely gone through, you know, different stages, but um, first exhibition, Abbey Creek Winery uh, back in 2017. Um, and that was the first person who let me put up all of my artwork everywhere. Bertoni is an amazing man. And I really feel like he helped set me on this path of uh, being a full-time practicing artist. And um, I created the wine labels for his uh, Aphrodite wine. And I've uh, been doing work ever so steadily since then. I didn't turn full-time though until the beginning of uh, this year. And um, I just found out that I have been accepted to uh, the Pacific Northwest College of Arts on a full ride scholarship through their equity scholarship um, for the work that I've been doing with my art um, tied to Black Lives Matter. And so, Yes, super excited about that. Uh, that's the biggest thing that's going on right now is um, transitioning back into doing school um, and uh, getting a, uh, a foundation in, in painting because <laughs> I'm a self-taught artist. And so being able to go back and get a lot of that education is, is, my, is the next you know, chapter in this journey for me. Physical takeaway for this is uh, going to be hopefully a poster. So I, of this work that I'm creating for this, I'm gonna be handing, not handing out, but I'll have three posters there um, of the work for people to take with them as a kind of like a commemorative thing from uh, this event, this exhibition. Um, so physically, I hope that people are able to get a hands on one of the posters. I want conversations really to be made looking at this piece, I want people to be able to talk about it, um, to be able to explain and articulate what they're feeling from the piece. And I can't necessarily say what they're going to feel, um, whether it's sadness or hope or resilience or whatever. Um, I want them to be able to actually take the time to kind of sit in it and, and look at it and have that dialogue with themselves and have that dialogue with other people that are in attendance. Um, or their family members. And um, so that's my biggest takeaway that I, I want people to be able to experience is to be able to physically see the work. Um, hopefully, you know, in the fall, a lot of people have been vaccinated by that time are, are able to uh, socially distance and be able to see this piece. For me personally, this is going to be one of my largest works. And it's also just personally going to be really heavy, really emotional. Um, I think it's going to be one of my greatest works yet, so I'm really excited.
I'm really excited for the exhibition. I will take it back actually to one of the first artists that sparked my interest in making this a, a thing, a career, and, and forming my um, artistry. My mom brought home a postcard of the work of Arby Smith. Arby Smith is a local artist here um, in, in the PDX metro area, which is amazing. I reached out to him didn't think that he was going to ever reach back out um, via email. And he did. And, he, um, and we met up at Portland State University, actually, at the, the Starbucks. And uh, he looked at my work. He critiqued it. He told me that he had a class coming up um, in, in painting um, figures and the um, you know live models and such like that and would help me um, move forward and uh, my artistic direction. At the time, I was like dabbling around with painting animals and nature and stuff like that. He was like, go into portraits. And that's what I did. I went into portraits. I went into figure. And um, the way that he did work made me think about um, my, my ancestry, my history. You know, and just take the moment out to go look at his work too. Um, he's actually got a lot of work. Uh, he's got a, a mural right now on MLK and Killingsworth that is great. It's beautiful. I was like, wow, like not only did I want to be able to paint like that, um, especially like the subject matter. For me, the subject matter of his work, a lot of people have controversy around. Um, and for me, like it's no different because I've got family members that have um, figurines and, and dolls and stuff that uh, that have been passed down over generations that are very controversial but then at the same time like it's interesting to hear different stories around them and, and why they keep them and everything anyways I, his work encapsulates all of those things while also talking about race in America and I just found that very eye-opening and for me I took that I didn't do work, as, I don't do work as direct as that. While though some of my restorative, um, my um, resistance works are like that. Uh, but in my general like painting series, I do portraits. They're very calm. They're very, um, you know, beautiful to look at. Lots of color, lots of movement, uh, while also being this like serene feel. I'm talking about movement as in like color and how I use like my technique and style. But he was the most transformative in, in the work that I do today. He actually started me on my career path uh, back around 2016, 17. So I have to give, give those props to him. <laughs> for me as an artist, you know, one of the biggest things uh, for me right now is this, um, this back and forth feeling of like, you're doing amazing work shot a you're doing work that is inspiring other people you're doing work that is um you know powerful while also balancing that out with uh burnout while also balancing that out with um a heavy schedule because I, I have a lot of you know projects that i'm commissions and stuff that i'm doing right now uh i would say it's been very interesting over these last few years, and I'm sure other artists of color, specifically black artists, have been feeling that where it's like so many people want to see your work and want to hear your voice. And it can be very tough to keep up with it all. But to giving myself adequate breaks, um, giving myself sabbaticals, like I, I just went on a back to back sabbatical, taking care of family. My aunt just had her first baby. Um, so I've been over there helping her with that and, and being around family. Um, my husband and I just moved and so into our first home. And so taking time off for life while balancing out a artistic career that focuses on the community, that um, has subject matter that is of what we do, you know, Black Lives Matter and, um, and speaking of, you know, Black bodies and voices that are in the Portland metro area, it's really tough. <laughs> and so I've actually been like really uh, hard on myself while giving myself breaks. And, you know, as I go through this journey, I realize that um, 
no, that's definitely needed, that I definitely shouldn't feel bad for that. I hope that other artists and that other people take the time that is needed, especially doing work um, that is reflecting what's going on in our society right now. Um, take the time to both create out of that passion and out of that need, but also take the necessary time for themselves.